Morning YouTube, how's everybody doing? Mark here with my fragrance haul for August 2011. I've been gone for a while and you guys know I don't stop buying even though I leave. Uh, so let's take a look at the goodies. I have around 20 bottles here, mostly niche guys. And um, for my designer heads, it doesn't mean I'm, you know, my nose is evolving or I'm not into designer fragrances. I'm definitely into designer fragrances also, but um, as far as the reviewing game and the way my channel is going right now, um, I have perhaps two to almost 300 designer bottles that I have to review. Um, so I'm kind of slowing down on the designer genre as far as buying goes because I got so much to review for you guys that I'm kind of delving into the niche and see what these niche brands can give me. So I'm looking into different um, niche brands or I'm bulking up on the niche brands that I absolutely love like Artisan, uh, Tom Ford, Bond Number no. 9, Creed. So basically I like to mix it up a little bit but this does not mean just because it's mostly niche right now um, that my channel is going to go into that direction. I'm always, always going to be reviewing $5 bottle of colognes, designers, um, you know, the top sellers, but I, I'm, all, I'm also going to go into the abstract, something different, the niche bottles, the hard to find bottles. I'll do both sides of the coins for you guys. But either way, um, there is a couple designer fragrances in here. So my designer heads, you're not completely ignored. There's a few here. So stick around and uh, you'll, you'll see what I think of some of the newer releases in designer. So let's get to it. First of all, um, let's start out with uh, the House of Artisan Parfumeur. Now this is one of my favorite fragrance brands in the niche side of things. Um, I'm really looking into getting the whole line and uh, this is a great start. Now these are two blind buys that I got for summer, specifically for summer. Um, I know summer's kind of on the tail end of things, but let's get to it. First of all, the first bottle I purchased was a Premier Figuier. Now, this is of course a fig based fragrance. Uh, once I do release my top uh, summer fragrances for 2011, you will see that Figs is a great summer scent um, to be unique, different, and to be cooling in the summer and not use citruses. Figs is really cooling, watery. Um, you guys will, will see it if you ever do smell a fig-based fragrance. Now, Premier Figuier um, is probably one of the first fig-based fragrances on the market. I believe this one was released in 93. I could be wrong, early 90s. Um, definitely fig based and it's it's what I come to expect from a fig based fragrance guys um, you know you got that really watery feeling um, it's very well done reminds me of Philosikos to be honest with you um, I'm definitely recommending this as a substitute for Philosikos maybe you know you'll get more juice with this one uh, for the bank for the buck, I believe this one could be cheaper for 100 mils. Um, I think you can't go wrong for a fig based fragrance. But Philosikos is the fig based fragrance that everybody hypes up, and this one really doesn't get any shine. Um, as far as quality goes, they go hand in hand. Um, maybe Philosikos will be better for longevity and projection. We're not sure about that yet. Um, I will be reviewing it later on. I will be testing this one out. But uh, as far as an initial impression, well done quality fig based fragrance, very green, very watery, uh, authentic fig, and has a small nutty appeal, so it kind of sets it apart from Filoscos that I'm getting there. So well done, um, I'm very impressed, and I really like fig based fragrances, so I really like that one already off the bat. My other artisan fragrance, yeah, I got two. Um, this one is L'eau de l'artisan, and uh, this again, I'm um, thinking of course for a summer based fragrance on this one. I'm going to do a couple sprays on this one. Uh, so let's take a snip. Okay, and this is almost on the other side of the coin. Um, your usual, right? Very citrusy off the bat. I'm getting a little mint here. So the citrus and the mint going head to head. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen mint really being up front like that with citrus together. Well done, very fresh, um, well done mint with citrus. Yeah, I've never seen mint get paired up with citrus like this that well. Um, so L'eau de l'artisan, I really, really, really like that fragrance too. So two winners right there. 
Now let's go to the Tom Ford house, his uh, private blend. Um, <laughs> this has been getting a lot of hype lately on YouTube, on my uh, Facebook group. A lot of people are loving Tom Ford's. I know uh, Neroli, the Neroli based fragrance is really getting a lot of people hyped up on this Tom Ford brand. But for myself, um, I did not purchase Neroli, but I purchased three uh, private blends. Um, I do have Tobacco Veni that's going to be reviewed very soon. Uh, the next one that I really was hyped about is Amber Absolute. And this is Amber Absolute right here. And uh, these are all blind buys also. Um, bought these overseas actually uh, online. Uh, they're fairly pricey, but uh, Amber Absolute, I'm very much hyped up on this one. Okay, this is a little strange. There's something in Amber Absolute that um, it's different. Um, it's very much unique. Um, something in here is not quite right for me. I can tell that it's going to be a warming fragrance. Maybe it's because I sprayed it on paper. It's got a slight boozy accord in here. Not sure if I like this on paper. Uh, it might be a different story on skin. It's very different, very warming, but right now... Um, the hype that I had for Amber Absolute kind of died down smelling this. It's very different. I don't really know how to explain how different it is, but it's really not appealing on paper. So Amber Absolute, yeah, I'm kind of iffy about it, but you never know. On skin, it could be, I think that it might do well on my skin, but we'll see. Next one I purchased was Azure Lime. Now this was actually a a fragrance that I got. Um, I got this on an eBay. Um, some guy was selling his Tom Ford's and he was selling Noir de Noir and this one kind of came with it. Like I wanted Noir de Noir and I was like, okay, I'll purchase Azure Lime with it. Um, I wasn't really wanting to get it, but whatever, right? It's going to finish my collection for Tom Ford. So Azure Lime, right off the bat, it's highly citric, guys. Uh, citrus based fragrance, of course. Um, very fresh, very well done, um, reminds me of a simple fresh citrus based fragrance. Um, think kind of like Aqua de Parma type of vibe. Nothing groundbreaking, definitely not worth the $200 price tag for 50 mils. Um, yeah. I'm not really impressed with it. Um, it's well done, citrus based fragrance, but uh, very simple. Nothing unique, right? For 200 bucks, you could probably find something much, much cheaper, half price or even one third of the price for, for that. So, Noir de Noir, this one is the one that I think is going to be the big winner of these three bottles. Uh, but you never know, right? Amber Absolute, I really wanted to enjoy it. Um, and it looks like it's not going to be a winner, at least on paper, it's not. Noir de Noir. Uh, let's take a sniff at this guy. Right off the bat, <laughs> right off the bat, this reminds me of Black Oud by uh, Montal. Um, it really gives me a hit of the rose and the, the oud. And I can smell that combo right off the bat. It's smelling like it's going to die down and go into something else. But right off the bat, that's what I get—a black oud hit of uh, heavy rose and black, or black and oud. So it reminds me of Montal Black Oud, and I absolutely adore that fragrance. So it's a winner. But again, it totally reminds me of another fragrance. So pricing around the same for those two, right? Um, you probably get the Montal for cheaper for 50 mil, though. Um, so I'll take a look at that and see if it does anything else on my skin. So. Let's go to the Healy brand. Now this one is actually a Facebook challenge uh, purchase that I got um, on my Facebook group. I challenged basically everybody in the group. I said, do this, and I asked a question, they answered it, and I picked somebody to win. And what they did is they pick a bottle, any bottle in the world, and uh, basically I will buy it and I'm going to review it. And this is the fragrance that got chosen this is Oranges and Lemons Say the Bells of St. Clement's by Healy. Out of all the bottles in the world, this one was got this one got picked. So <laughs> I'm assuming it's a really good summer fragrance. I would assume. Alright. So I can smell from here, it's very strong. It's a good thing for citrus. 
All right, it's a well done citrus. Okay, I give it that. Well done citrus. Um, you can tell the quality right out, right out of the gate. And this type of fragrance, this is what makes Azure Lime kind of redundant. Um, Healy's Orange and Lemons is $150 for 100 mils, and then Azure Lime for Tom Ford is 50 mils, and you're paying 200. Um, so right there, off the bat, I would recommend Orange and Lemons from Healy. Uh, well over Azure Lime, you can tell the quality. So there you go. That makes you know Azure Lime a, a, actually a bad purchase. So just to let you guys know and that's what I do right that's what that's why I purchase all these fragrances for you guys we're gonna compare them we're gonna see what's worth the dough especially on the niche side of things so next next is a different company fragrance um, I did I do own Rose Poivre which was made by Jean-Claude Elena this is uh, his daughter's creation this is Cell the Vetiver and this one I'm not gonna lie I've smelt it uh, quite a few times I've had I believe four or five samples of this stuff over the years. Um, I've been itching to purchase this for a long, long time. I know a lot of my followers know about that. I mentioned it a few times. And this is basically the name says it all. This is where the name says what the fragrance is. It's a vetiver based fragrance, guys. It's got a little salty note to it. Um, it's very well balanced. That's something that I really enjoyed with Celle de Vetiver. It's the nice earthy vetiver balances out so well with the citrus like salty marine like note and it goes hand in hand um, very well done and uh, very good purchase uh, set of the vetiver now let's go to bond number nine this is the only bond I purchased uh, overseas which is surprising usually I buy a few of these this is Cooper Square um, definitely a nice bottle for a bond it's going to look good in my collection. And Cooper Square is a fairly new release by Bond Number 9. And uh, this one is a, a blind buy. I have not smelt it. And let's take a smell. It's really interesting. I can tell right away that this is not going to be for everybody. Um, it has a boozy feel to it um, with fruits, a little bit of spices. So it really attacks the nose right off the bat. And that's why I say this is not going to be for everybody when you first smell it. Mm. Um, this is going to be a different one, guys. It's unique. Um, I like it. Sort of. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the price tag, we'll, we'll see, you know. But uh, it's all right. It's definitely different, though. All right, next. Um, this is actually a designer brand. Designer heads, wake up. <laughs> um, this is Original Penguin. I like, I like this bottle. It's a nice bottle, gold, a uh, little penguin right here. And this is uh, metallic. You know, it's got the, uh, the Bleu de Chanel feel to it. And uh, let's smell penguin. This is one that I, I was really interested in uh, purchasing. I blind bought this too. I actually got the kit with it, the shower gel and the deodorant. I got a better deal on there. Okay, this is very much fresh and safe, guys. Um, I can definitely smell. I can smell the neroli and the apple in this, in the uh, top notes. Um, this might be a winner for all season, guys. This is for somebody that's looking for something, you know, really safe and light. Um, think L'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent, you know, with the apple. Yeah, it's one of those safe scents that you could probably pull off all season or you can wear for the office use so penguin next uh, designer heads stay away <laughs> this is diesel fuel for life the denim edition I purchased this before I actually went overseas um, a lot of people that have been on blog TV with me have seen that I tested this out on blog TV before I left I think it was back in May um, and basically I've smelt this a few times now since I purchased it and there's not much of a difference to this one to the original, if any. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, anybody that really doesn't know much about fragrances isn't really going to notice a difference. So for the regular guy, this one is, don't waste your cash if you got the original. I'd prefer for you to purchase the original than this thing. But to be honest with you, there's really not much change um, from the original, um, which is not really a good thing because I wanted something a little more bold and daring from Diesel 
either way, uh, Fuel for Life is a great release from them, but this is kind of a redundant release, uh, personally. Next, still in the designer genre, we got La Nuit de l'Homme, Le Parfum. Now this one, again, I, I got before I went away, and anybody that was on Blog TV, uh, I gave you guys an initial impression on this one, and again, yes, I've smelt this before a few times, and I like it. It's got um, some qualities of the original, but it's definitely different enough to warrant a purchase, unlike the diesel uh, denim. So, I think the, the original La Nuit de Lame is probably a much better crowd pleaser as far as compliments and, you know, more of the population is going to like this one. This one, Le Parfum, I would recommend to take a look at this one. Uh, it's very nice. I like it. I think it's got a little more spice and, and balance to it than the, the other one. Um, I really think, like I said in my blog TV, I think I said it was like a Chanel Allure um, meets La Nuit de l'Homme. And they meshed it together, put that, you know, that Chanel Allure on the spices. Uh, very nice, nicely blended. Works very well. But I really think the, the EDT um, is going to please more noses than this guy. So let's go back to the niche side of things, guys. Let's go to Frappé, and this is their, um, their highly recommended by a lot of fragrance reviewers here on YouTube, L'Humaniste. And L'Humaniste by Frappé. Um, this is my first fragrance from this brand. I blind bought this because of the hype on YouTube. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, anything that's hyped on YouTube, I'm probably going to purchase it and see if it's worth the hype. So this guy... Lumanist is very well done. Um, you can tell it's quality, so it's worth the money. Um, if you like these type of fragrances, I can tell that this is going to be a great spring, summer, even fall. I could even say that this is going to be an all-season fragrance. It's got a lot of citrus in it, but a light booziness to it, too. So something a little different, a little daring. Lumanist, well done, I think. Next, let's go to Parfum de Nicolai. Now, Parfum de Nicolai, I purchased New York uh, a while ago, and this is my second purchase from this uh, brand. I really think that uh, Patricia de Nicolai does great fragrances. Um, this is Fig Tea. Now, Fig Tea, like I said with my first fragrance that I purchased from this haul, uh, Premier Figuier by Artisan. I'm huge into figs right now, especially for the summer. Uh, you know, totally different. Uh, for the summertime. And this one, there's definitely figs in here, but it's not as watery. Um, it really feels like something else is anchoring this fragrance than the figs. So it's a different take on the figs, like, you know, Philosikos, Marc Jacobs Men, um, Premier Figuier. All the fig-based fragrances that I've smelt are very watery, very transparent, and the figs are center stage. On this thing, it's sharing center stage with something else. Um, is it tea? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to check, but something else is anchoring this, and it's giving it, giving it more depth than the other ones, which makes it a little more versatile that you can wear in different seasons. Well done. Um, I like it. It's not um, something that I would highly recommend as far as a fig-based fragrance. I'd probably go with the simpler ones that it's just figs, 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 but this one is definitely worth taking a look at, and... Nikolai fragrances aren't that expensive to be a niche brand. Okay, let's go to Serge Lutin. And uh, this is a, also a brand that I want to purchase every single bottle they have released. Um, so I'm slowly going to do that. This is Lo. And this is definitely a different take by Serge. Um, usually his fragrances are, you know, crazy uh, dark, uh, fruity, uh, lots of woods, a lot of spice. Um, so this is a really a different direction for Serge Lutin. Uh, so low. And again, like, like I said, it's very fresh, total 180 from his usual. Um, I think this is a winner for summer, guys. Really well done, really transparent. It's got like a citrus, soapy-like quality. I like it. I, I think it's going to be really good for the summer. And I think it's going to be good in like the real heat. Um, this is one to look at if you're in one of those countries that it's really hot, humid, and it's just too much. 
some of these fragrances might be too much for you. That one would be a good one to look at. All right, next is a Guerlain fragrance. This is, a, again, my designer heads, wake up. <laughs> this is uh, Pamplelune. Now, you're going to find this in the women's section. Um, this is uh, Pamplemousse. Um, let's uh, take a smell of Pamplelune. And Pamplemousse, by the way, is uh, French for grapefruit, if you didn't know if I said that. And it's very grapefruity. Um, the little hint of something added in. It's interesting. It's not your typical run-of-the-mill grapefruit designer fragrance. Um, I think I may love this fragrance. It's very authentic, well done, Guerlain. Always quality, and I really like that one, Pamplelune. Next, we got uh, CBI Hate Perfume. Um, you guys know I purchased uh, um, Burning Leaves from them. This is Beach, 1966. At the beach, 1966. As you can see, water's not as dirty on this one than the last one. And this is water-based perfume, guys. This is not uh, your regular Joe. It's definitely different. And I just totally soaked this paper. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have sprayed three times. Oh, whew. Smells like Fire Island right off the bat from bond number nine. I can smell it from here. I haven't even put it to my nose. Holy. So it's going to be potent. Yeah, Fire Island Part 2. Um, so, suntan lotion, like Fire Island. This might be like the American version. You know how Fire Island's kind of like, um, not like copper tone, but like, they said it was based on a, a French um, suntan lotion, and you could see that it was kind of different. But you can definitely smell the lotion, the sand, the seashells. It's fantastic. I like it. Um, I'm I'm not a huge fan of Fire Island. Like I'm not on the bandwagon, as they say. Uh, I like this one. This one's a little different. All right, Sirius. Sirius, another brand that's hyped up on YouTube. A lot of reviewers are loving it, so I'm like, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. And Sirius, Pudong, number four. This is number four. This is a summer-based fragrance, apparently. Um, I think the review that got me into this was Brandon, Cup of Suprema Cell, definitely great reviewer, that's the man right there, um, definitely need to go to Chi-Town and go, go hang out with him for a bit. So serious, this is my first test of this, this brand, I want to see what they're going to give me, is it quality, is it worth the money, and, okay, right off the bat, very fresh, apples, citruses, mixed together, um, it's nice, but I'm not sure this blows my mind. Um, is it worth the price tag? Hmm, I'm not sure about it yet. Because I know a lot of designer fragrances can do this, the same thing. Um, this might be a little higher quality, it might give you a little more. But on a piece of paper, I can't really judge that. As far as being worth the money, hmm, we'll see. All right, I got three more designer guys. And then I got my jewel that I'm staying, I'm sticking it for the end. So let's go to next designer. This is Armani Code Summer. I believe this is the 2010 edition. I got this overseas. This was, I actually smelt it before purchasing it. Imagine that. Um, they only had one left, and then I jumped on it. Because I knew it was a 2010. I didn't know if it was limited edition. I was like, ah, I got to get this. First of all, I need coffee. Armani Code Summer. You know, Armani Code, when you think Armani Code, you, you're thinking, no, this is not going to work as a summer-based fragrance. I know they released the sport version. This one, I like it. Fresh. Um, you can tell it's going to have the original Armani Code that's going to kind of morph into this, but uh, a good summer, summer fragrance. And usually these flankers I really don't like. This one's okay. It's good. Um, I wouldn't pay Armani price, but if you can get a discount, you know, 40 bucks, 30 bucks. I'd jump on it. It's good summer, safe summer fragrance. Very well done. Next is a bottle that I I had before. This is L'Instant de Guerlain pour Homme, the extreme version. Um, I bought a tester on eBay because I couldn't find it anywhere. 
And I was like, I was wearing that stuff on my skin a lot. I hated it. It was almost giving me gag reflex. Everybody loves this on YouTube. I don't know what the hype was about. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to bash this thing like a crazy person. And then I was in Dubai, I think. Dubai? I think so. And they had this. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to smell this again on a piece of paper and see what it gives me. And I think it was a little different than my tester. I still need to go check. But maybe my sense of smell changed. Uh, but I was wearing this a little bit overseas. Uh, you know, it's not really a good warm, warm weather fragrance. So I couldn't really wear it that much. But I'm turning myself into liking this. Not loving it, liking it. It's all right, um, but I need to go check out that tester and see if I got a fake, because that wouldn't be good. But that's what happens, right, when you purchase on eBay. Next, oh, I forgot to even introduce this. Next, Hermes, Jardin sur le Toit. This is their new Jardin. And this one, I've heard a lot of people say that this one is very much a Jean-Claude Dillon fragrance. Very watery, very transparent, not very good for projection and longevity. Wrong. Totally wrong. First of all, I wore this, right? I got this a duty free with my length stand the getaway. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Very fruity, very, very well. Awesome summer base fragrance. Careful on the sprayer. This thing projects like a madman. I've never seen an LNF enough fragrance do what this thing does. Okay? I did three sprays, or I think four sprays when I first got it. Wiped out everybody. <laughs> everybody. This is well done. I really like Jardin sur le Trois. I think this is like my number two right under Jardin sur le Nil. Um, I really recommend this as a summer fragrance. Um, the only thing with these Jardin lines, they're quite expensive. Hermes, always expensive, a little more expensive than uh, your run-of-mill designer. But either way, well done. But projection and longevity with this sucker is crazy. This is the first Elena that I think is absolutely crazy and well done you know the original Elena recipe well done you know well balanced but gives you projection and longevity craziness for summer summer okay last but not least is my baby this is my jewel of this haul this is black afghano black juice boys black afghano and I'm just gonna do one spray of this because I really don't want to waste this little bit of juice that I have and I've had a sample of this and I fell in love with it if you guys follow my channel you know I fell in love and I was looking for this fragrance for I think a year it's been a year that I've been going on Lucky Scent and I went when you guys get this stuff you email me I you will get a purchase right away and they did and they did get a purchase right away and now it's gone again either way Black Afghano I'm gonna sit here and tell you guys this right now this is going to get a perfect score on the review. I really just can't explain how great this fragrance is. This is for a fragrance head, okay? This is not for your run-of-the-mill guy. If you're a 13, 14 year old and you're saying, this guy loves this, I gotta buy this. No, 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 no. This is for the fragrance head that loves something unique, something dark, something, it's gorgeous. It's unique, it's well done, it's just simply outstanding, it's hard to find, it's a work of art. Black Afghano, um, this is by far, if I could only get one bottle from this whole haul, would be this guy. 10 times out of 10, I will get this one. And this is going to get a great score in my review. I can already say it now. Boom, done. Um, so thanks for watching my haul. This is my haul. Um, I do have several bottles in the mail right now that I haven't made this haul. Um, namely, Amouage Honor Man. Um, I can't wait the new Amouage bottle for men. Um, so I might be doing an another haul maybe three three weeks from now probably and wait till all those bottles come in and then do another haul for you guys but this is it this is uh, mostly niche hope you guys enjoyed it there's some winners there's some losers uh, but definitely always fun to do a fragrance haul see you guys later and hopefully my next video is most likely going to be my top summer fragrances niche and designer hopefully so check you guys